We gon' do it how you want it, boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it, boss talk. It's a unique hustle, boss talk. Yeah, we came from the struggle. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, man. I'm here. My guy is in the building, man. I'm turned right now, man. Pippin Ken is on the set, man. What up, what up? Man, and he got company today, man. This guy right here, man. Hey, man, after watching him interview earlier, I begged the nigga to come over here. You know what I'm talking about, man? Yeah, Rome man. is in the building, man. Rome, Rome. <laughs> What's going on, baby? Like cell phone. Man, I tell you, man, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Man, like, this, hey, this, hey, this here different, man. Oh, man, yeah. you know, hey, <laughs> hey, I've been enjoying the fellowship, man. Hey, you know, it's Say, like, man, I'm in the right. deep, man. Dallas, man. Hey, man, you had me way out in New York somewhere last week, man. Man, yeah, I'm gonna quit yeah, messing I with see, you, man. I see. <laughs> Hey, 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 shit, man. I stand Pimmo got 52 zip codes, man. Exactly. <laughs> man, you know, I, I really trip off the fact, man. Like, like when I when I think about just the way this whole platform done exploded, man, you know, all the people and stuff that be, you know, locking in, r rocking with me now, yeah. man. It's just a it's a beautiful thing, man. And, uh, uh, Mr. Servon says black media, man. Say we pretty much controlling hey, man, our own seed. destiny that, now. Like I said exactly. earlier, man, it's that seed. It's yeah. not the apple tree or the forest, it's the seed. Man, man. Plant that seed, man, it's going to grow a forest. Man, so, man, I, I like I said, I, when I seen y'all earlier, man, and heard all them stories, I said, man, I got to I gotta talk to them, man. Now, break this party down. That's what I was really interested in. I want to get right into this party, this this massive party that you were talking about a little earlier. Yeah, man, so Rome, you know what I'm saying, he threw a party. He brought all the big names in. And, you know, uh, man, we all had suites. He had 40 suites. You know what I'm saying? He had uh, 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 20 stretch limos, Hummer limos. Uh, man, we had catering, food. Everything was free. Everybody got in for free. He must have spent about 100000 you know what I'm saying? Rome, right. you know, a lot of people don't know, but he was one of the biggest pimps that ever come through Dallas. Through Dallas. You know? I mean, he had 17 white bitches, you know what I'm saying? Had a, 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 a penthouse. You know, downtown, you know what I'm saying? A lot of other properties, you know. Rome, so you telling me, now what made you do this party, man? Man, you know, uh, I, 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 I always wanted to wanted to, to bring some excitement. Actually, and actually, in actuality, it was actually my birthday party. I just wanted to do it big like that. You know, my birthday fell that first week of March. And uh, I threw that party March 5th. And, uh, you know, like I said, I wanted to, you know, I got, after I elevated in the game and started meeting, you know, good good cast, running into good cast, meeting Ken and, you know, Bishop and, you know, a couple other cast band. And I went out to L.A. and I, I was sitting up in uh, Bishop's apartment, man, with it, man. We was sitting there just chopping it up, man. And that's kind of what, what the idea originated from. You know, he put me in contact with, with uh, everybody and, can you tell the people who was all there? Uh, man, uh, I mean, anybody you can think of that's associated with the lifestyle, man. Name, uh, name will say, say they can get a, a glimpse of, or they can have a I visual mean, we what, had, what we, we had did. Ice, Ice T, we had Coco, we had Big Daddy Kane, we had Dolomite, before he passed, rest in peace. Uh, we had Max Julian. Uh, who played Goldie in the May Mac. he rest in peace. Exactly. And uh, we had uh, Sugar Free perform. Um, Eight Ball MJG. Kenny uh, Red. Kenny Red. Reverend Seymour. Minister Seymour. Uh, Orange Juice Jones. Uh, man, it's the whole line. You do it, man. You say Orange Juice Jones. I saw you walking in the yes, rain, sir. Orange Juice yes, Jones. <laughs> man, you man. were holding hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, man, really? man spent yeah, the yeah. bank, man. I mean, yeah, I, Dallas ain't never been the same. Man, but I mean, how did you I mean, end up even linking with some of these people? How no, would you even know these people? I, 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 I had initially, uh, well, like I say, I had initially talked to Morris Day about coming to do that, do the main performance. Okay. Uh, I, I spoke with him personally on the phone and, and uh, he was already booked for an event out here in April. Uh, so therefore we couldn't get him booked for that, for that player's ball. But you know, like I say, I was able to get put in contact with a lot of, a lot of cats through uh, Ken and uh, uh, Bishop. 
Wow. You know. Wow. So you you basically reaching out to him through Ken yeah. Bishop. Y'all trying to y'all y'all figuring it out and you done already told him I'm for the I'm for the put yeah, this yeah, party yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. Well see I, I I went over well I went to Ken's party over in Milwaukee. <laughs> he tried yeah. not to see that. Now wait a minute. Went, see, there, there it is right I, there. I went to Ken's Ken, you well, the see, one started it. I, I, that's that's where I got you know, I went to Ken's party, then I went to Bishop's party over in Chicago. Okay. Got a chance to meet uh, uh Boosie Collins and, and just <laughs> Few other players, man, and I'm like, man, I need to bring something like this to, to Dallas. Dallas. So that's kind of how that how it all came about. That's hard, right there, man. Yeah. So and so you you so would you, be honest? Would you really trying to make it bigger? Let's yeah. be real. Yeah, yeah. you I, seen Ken's, you yeah. seen Pip Ken, yeah, and you, you seen it on us. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's <laughs> the one. You <laughs> seen it on us. He's trying to make it. In. <laughs> I, I, I had hey. the brat. I had uh, Bum B. I had him. I had uh, uh, May she rest in peace, uh, Gangsta Boo. Uh, you know, I had a lot of people there. Yeah, I, I but, think but, he but, tried to he come on yeah, with it. Yeah, hey man, right. that, that that man brought the whole Hollywood. Oh, hey man, man, that shit was big. It yeah, was wow. fun. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was awesome, man. I mean, like I say, it it it, it was a. Uh, it, it originated from from the, from the, from the ideas that I got from Ken and and, and, and when I went out to Bishop's party. So yeah, yeah, I'm like man, I need to bring some shit like this to, to Texas. You know, that's crazy, man. Because like I said, you said how much did you say you spent like like uh, in total for the well, party? That 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 particular party was a two day event. Okay, so we we you know like I said and at that time I owned the I owned my own club. So uh, I think I spent I think I spent. Probably about a hundred, man. You know, you spent a hundred k. Yeah, probably about right, right easy. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's you know, like I said, I took care of everything. You know, yeah. flights, hotel, it, it bringing them in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and you first classed them. Yeah, all the way through, man. You know, but had, let me ask had, you. Had, had a catering on deck the whole state, man. You know, free food, everything. Man. Wow, champagne. You ain't put it on. You ain't put it on K one hundred four and nothing that was going down. I, it, it was advertised. Yeah. So y'all did market it, it, like we, we advertised on ninety seven nine. Who was, uh, what year was that, 94? That was, that, that, that was in 2005. That's, is that Greg Street? No, that was uh, 2005. We had, uh, 2005, we had. Uh, uh, I'm thinking that's Greg Street. It wasn't Baby nah, back then. That nah, was Greg. Nah, it was, uh, uh, damn. On 104, it was. Well, uh, let's see, we'll see. It, it was during the time that Club Blue was open downtown. Okay, so I remember Blue, that. Club Blue had, uh, had 104. And I had ninety seven nine. Oh, so you had what's that big bank? Big Bink. Uh, uh, big Bink. Uh, smooth DJ Smooth. DJ Smooth. He actually DJ the event. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Throw down Sam was. Uh, Throw down uh, Sam. Yeah, yeah. He he was he he was uh, uh, one of the connects I dealt with. You know, on. The, uh, uh, on the uh, on the one hundred four side. On the one hundred four side, mm -hmm. and and so. Basically, you you so you had it on lock, so you basically were known for throwing pot, but this one here was the one that broke the right. mold. Yeah, Would you I, say this the biggest party that you threw in Dallas? Yeah, yeah, this is by far the biggest. By far the biggest. Yeah, you know. Have you seen anybody top it since then? Nah, man. They 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 starving for another one, man. I, I'm really really trying to trying to contemplate putting a, another big one together for them, man. Because I mean that one there was a big success, and it just kind of it, it paved the way for people that 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 that. that Became aware of it, so now they they waiting on it. Man. Let me let, let me say something though. The the reason why you know that would never be duplicated is because it wasn't done for the sole purpose of money. It was done because right. of love for the game. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you know, just all the people that Rome thought that he would want to fuck with right. or he would want to be at his party. Right. The average person, you know, when they make a move like that, they're only thinking about the financial right. rewards of the of, of, of the circumstances. Yeah, you know, yeah. But with I him, agree. it was it was purely organic, and it was all about you know the moment and the history and the game. Dang, man! So I mean, you know, of course, the seventeen the seventeen hoes, the white girls. Mm -hmm. Which you, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I heard you asking questions earlier, but I thought about what you said in your in that Pimp C song about the white girl is the right girl and all this talk about the white girl pretty much being in the car and the black girl pushing the car. I won't be out. Then well, I hear his story and, and it's like, man, uh, what is it? white girl gonna get it, get it, get it? Black girl is not gonna be with it. You well, said that. Well, you know, you know, 
Hey, you know, Rome, Rome had the convertible Benz, right? He had, he had that convertible Benz in that Bentley back then. So if he would have put a black bitch in that Bentley, the oil light would have came on and said, change the bitch. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> right. right. Say, so, I mean, what made you really just, was it that the white girls was easier to deal with? Or was it? Well, I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't so much as that. I mean, it just. I, I mean, you know, like I say, I. I, I, I mean, I just attracted. I just attracted more more uh, white 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 girls or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Why but, did you attract more white girls? Well, I mean, I I'm mean, trying to figure that out. Like, well, I, I, I I can tell you why. Because well, he, he he didn't have the Jerry curl. He didn't have the. The braids, he wasn't sagging, you know, he wore, you know, Gucci and, right, you know, right. he looked he looked the part, you know, white right. girls, you know, they, they, they you know, they, they like that shit, you know what I'm saying? They like a, a classic, right. you know, they want to be with a black man Oh, anyway. he was white collar. Well, he yeah. wasn't white collar, he, was, he just dressed extremely nice and, and, and right. he didn't look like, you know, he had a he low fade like you got, not like I got, Kip you know what I'm saying, you know, right. wore, wore expensive clothes, you know, you, you see him walking, you can see the red up on the feet like he stepped on somebody. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So he was always, you know, the distinguished gentleman. I think that that's what distinguished, you know, the, the, the black bitch from the white bitch. You know, the black bitch, she wants the nigga with the tattoos on his face, with the right. gun hanging out, you know, with right. driving crazy on the track and shit, you know. She right. attracted to that. But, you know, white girls, you know, at some point, once they realize their value, and they start going into the Hilton, they start going to the Crown Plaza, they start making real money, they know that they can't have that type of dude and really, you know, keep doing what they're doing unless they just ghetto fabulous. Right. Wow. Wow. What, and and what's, what's your take on it? What what, what made well, you the, the, that, that guy? Man, you know what? I never really I, I never really put the two on the ten about it, man. I just was, you know, like I say, I just wanted, I set out, you know, I set out to do what I was going to do, but I wanted to be the best at what I did. Wow. And, and uh, you know, like I say, you know, uh, I mean, majority of, of, of the white girls wasn't white girls. Some of them white girls was from England with broken, broken English and shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, uh, uh, so he, hey, you know, he didn't only have the foreign car; he had the yeah, yeah, foreign yeah, policy yeah. on the bitch too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had a mixture, man. It ain't like they all was just white girls. You know, I had a mixture. I had, you know, Asian, and, and, Asian, uh, Cajun, Malaysian, you know, Asian, Puerto Rican. You know, so yeah, you know, I had it all, man. Man, so all man, what, what, what was, what was the most you made in one night? In, well, I tell you this. On a good night for me, one night about eleven, twelve thousand. Bad night about six or seven thousand. So you was upset on every, that six or seven every, thousand night. Well, I mean, like, ah, dang, I got should have did better than this. Well, I mean, not not so much as that because I know they gonna they gonna try to get, they gonna try to reach back and make up for what they what they came short on. You know? But he was spending forty thousand a month just in expenses. Tell them yeah. what you made them girls do. Well, we sit down, man, in my penthouse joint, man, one day. I said, hey, okay, I, got, I, I went and got a bunch of little notepads, passed them out to everybody. And what I want to do is write down every expense that's going out the door, you know what I'm saying, regardless if it's nails, phone, hair, car note, rent, whatever. But I had them write everything down. I'm talking about everything, every expense. And we totaled it all up at at the end of that, and it, it all came to about forty three thousand. Wow! And that's what I was spending each month. Forty three thousand. Oh, was, so, give me something. Living, what was that the was things, a living budget? You know, what, what was I mean? some of the things that you was buying though? I mean, that some well, of the see, higher expenses. Well, see, you know, my girls had. You know, you probably didn't even know this, but my girls they had they had their own homes, man. They had two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollar homes in their name by themselves. I mean, that that I got, that I had to. You make. made sure that it was yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and then, of course, you know they had top of the line vehicles and whatnot. You know they was they was well taken care. Of, you know. Wow, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's why I want you to fail is because he had bought too many cars. Yeah. Bought too many cars. Well, they say I spent over 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 well over a hundred hundred and sixty six or whatever one hundred sixty six k or whatever in a short amount of time, less than a year, and they was you know. Let's talk about that for a second. So how did they even approach you? You know, because, you know, usually it's some talking going on when them, well, al when them alphabet boys let me, come let me, on let me, it. Let me, let me tell you. The motherfuckers came to me. Uh, they had a a little pyramid size. Uh, they had a piece of paper with a little pyramid on that motherfucker with some little boxes. 
looked like some pictures. When the motherfucker seen me peek at it, he hurried up and tucked it in his folder. But I put two and two together. What it was, they have all they had already talked to people, asking people, "What do I do? What does what, what do you know that man to do?" You know what I'm saying? Wow. So uh, after you know, shit, ten ten motherfuckers talking about, hey, he, he got girls and yada yada yada. You know, they they, they just slapped me. They, they when they came down on me, they tried to make up a, a fucking uh, escort business. I suppose that oh, never heard of it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, it was. It was. They had already had a case built up on me before they even, even so approached. So they were trying to build a case, man. And, and, yeah. and, 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 they, and they didn't get it. Have, they he, didn't he, he went for money laundering. He didn't go for pimping. Yeah, they, correct. They, they hit me for, yeah, they hit me for the money laundering. They tried to build it up on that. And they didn't have up. nothing on it. Yeah, exactly. They was trying to build. They up came on show. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. So when they came, they came wrong. You know, you let alphabet boys come right. Well, you know, like I say, I, I, you know, to 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 avoid them. Fucking with my girls and shit, I just went ahead and took my lick and got my shit and did it over and got it over with. Wow, you know what I'm saying? Because well, you know, like I say, shit, it could have been worse. How long did you go fighting the case? Because it didn't just happen like that. You speak it like that, but we know that that they came talk to you. Then after that, it's a it, it's some you got you got to shift and move and try to figure out okay right. what I'm doing here. If they really got me, do right. they got me? They don't got me. Oh man, them niggas ain't got nothing. Right. How long did that go well, on? Well, you know what 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 kind of what kind of what kind of uh, made me make a decision about just going ahead and and uh, you know doing my time getting it over with is when I had met with my lawyer. You know, okay, so how long did you? And, well, long from the time you found out that they was trying to get you for money laundering to the time you went, how long was that? Oh, it, 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 I was, I was, it was well over, over a year. See what I mean? That's a long time to be out yeah. in the streets trying yeah. to yeah. move some things around because you know you about to sit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like I say, shit, it was about a year I was dealing with that, and, and then I, you know, like I said, I went ahead and got my shit on over. With, what was your most important thing that you were trying to get straight before you went? Well, you turn yourself. I was. I was I was trying to um, I was actually I was actually trying to trying to buy a business so you could work while you was locked right, up. Right, right. I was actually in the process of buying a, a hair salon. How lo how much was that hair salon? And that hair way? salon, the, uh, I was gonna the lady was gonna sell it to me for thirty k. Thirty k. Yeah. So uh, deal ended up falling through. You know. But you tried to get the thirty k. You tried to try to get that so that you could ride that wave until you came home. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I was trying to trying to buy that shop from her because she was she was actually going to sell it to me, which she was going to sell it to me. But at the last minute, she decided to keep it. So how that's much? Why the, how much that damn attorney hit you for trying to fight that case, uh, man? Man, because that, that that's what they hit you. They they don't be playing. Yeah, I I, I know I know uh, I know he hit me for like. Close to about a quarter. I'd say around 20, you know, 20 racks. He hit you for 20 racks? Yeah. And yeah. and he was just like, I'm going to guarantee you this. And did, what was the biggest time they came at you with? Well, I mean, they, they came at me. Uh, well, actually, they, they see, one thing about the Fed, they go by guidelines. Okay. So it 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 really wasn't no no. They bargain knew what there. you, they, well, it was you straight know, up knew what you was going to have to do. Yeah, my my particular charge fell within a certain guideline, so that's that, that's what I was that's that's what I was uh, do, that's what I had to do. Wow! And and so you you get this case? They give you how many years? Uh, thirty thirty six months. Thirty six months. Yeah. And you know already you fit to sit down for thirty six months. The girls gone already. Are they old? Yeah, yeah. They they, yeah, they left a yeah, long they, time they ago. And shit, they, they know like already it's hot. And, and, and continue to do their thing, man. But that's that's how the game do. That's how the game go, though, man. You know, like I say. But, but uh, while you was going to end one of them, reach out to well, you. I had I had I had a a few of them that 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 stayed down for. A while, that's what I was thinking. You know, kept my books straight. Kept you know kept me papered up inside. Wow. And uh, you know, like I say, maintained some of the stuff that I did have out here. Oh, so, some that did so, maintain some of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't all. All, all bad experience, you know what I'm saying? But was M one of them that ran off on you, uh, like uh, when you came back? Even though they had them ran off on you, tried to say, "Hey, let's try, make try to reach back out, reach, reach back, reach back, out, back yeah. out." But see, by that time, you know, I, I've had a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of time of to, to just sit back and just clear my head, man. And you know, when I got out, my my whole 
outlook was different. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just, I was just on something totally different. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I had outgrown. Ken, what do you think? You, you know. You know I mean, you've seen these things happen before when you see a brother, even though it wasn't for the ism, um, when you see a brother go down and come back like that, you know, in the game, niggas be just like leery of fact of, okay, uh, uh, how this do, do y'all even think about it when you left? Because you left. Uh, no, I was a lot younger when I left. When, when, when Rome left, you know what I mean? I think it kind of put a dent in the game because, you know, he was – Offering some kind of motivation. But see, a lot, a lot of people don't know. See, I'm a three-time loser, right? What? I caught a pimping case in San Francisco. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, caught, I caught a pimping case. How time. old was you when you caught that case? I caught that case in 98. So that was way like, before. 1998, yeah. You didn't stay gone in that long. I stayed. I stayed. I did. I did my time uh, in in uh, Susanville in California, man. Two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. So that see what I'm saying. A lot of times, this you know what I'm saying. So different thing going on, yeah, man. man. You get it out of them. When I got to this federal bid, I was like, man, I can't do this shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, between you know, I started out as a dope boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, back in shit the early '90s. You know, I mean, packing pistols, walking down the street with trench coat and, and two big ass pistols on my side. In the early nineties. In the early nineties, I graduated from that. You know, got you I, when I when I, crazy thing, man, when I caught that, when I when I got caught up on that dope dope case, I felt relieved, man. Right? You know, police put me in the back of the car. I felt relieved. I was just so so far in them streets. I felt relieved when I got arrested. Wow, and and you so know, what guided like, you into the the, the ism? <clears throat> man, you know, you see uh, what I'm saying. Let me, t- let me tell you something. Uh, I've been around the game all my life. Okay, you understand what I'm saying. I mean, I've you know, growing up as a kid, you know, five six years old, I've been around it, and uh, can't really explain what 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 what. I mean, you know, like I say, it's just I just Idiot. gravitated to it, man. You know. And you I was born knew, into it? I knew I didn't want to go back to selling that dope no more. Oh, okay. I you get know it. what I'm saying? And uh, shit. I get out and, uh, I mean, man, uh, you know, being in the penitentiary, you know as well as I do, nigga gonna get a hold of them motherfucking Donald Goins and all them motherfucking <laughs> <laughs> pill books, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which one was your favorite, nigga? I'm down there. <laughs> I'm down there, I'm down there, there memorizing the books word for word, goddamn, for to get out of pill, right? <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> you went and I always started studying out of pill. Hey, man, I had a notepad memorizing this shit, man. <laughs> Iceberg uh, Slim. Hey, that's where it started from, man. I ain't going to even sit here in front. Man. Which book was it? Man, I didn't read all of them. All of them? Hell around the read all of them, man. So you knew when I get out of here. I already, yeah, I already knew what I was going to do. And wow, it, and it was a trip. It seemed like, it seemed like. Uh, I mean, man, I, I could, I could, I could tell you a whole story, bro. I okay. Mean, I mean, I really need to be writing a book about my life, really. Yeah. Because it's just so much that. I mean, it's like everything was. I mean, it's like every time I get to a light, I would spot a hope. I would know what she's getting ready to do before the light even changed. She pull up in the gas station. I pull up at the gas station. Bam. Two hours later, she going on a call. She going to turn a date. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you when knew. It kept, man, it was like it was just lining up every time. I, I come up with one chick. She want to come fuck with me, right? I just got out of TDC, so I know what the TDC uniforms and shit look like. Brought in her bathroom, getting dressed. We getting ready to go. She getting ready to go home. I happened to look over in that closet. This is a fucking TDC uniform. This is this was, used to be a TDC correctional office. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So last evening, go get go, go, go home. You know, different little shit like that. I mean, she out there holding and going. Man, I mean, everything would just happen like a domino effect every time, man. Every time I leave the house, I'd come up with a, a fresh bitch. There was it, okay, <clears throat> but well, who was your, can you remember the first, the first hoe you ever know? Uh... Very first was an old Hawaiian lady. That was the first one. The very first one. What about you, Ken? Can you remember the first one ever? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was. Uh, I ran away from home, me and my brother, and we was. Uh, we was, we was on the track on Twenty Fourth in California, 
uh, uh, Madison in California in the in uh, Chicago, and uh, this one this one dame. She said, "You're a little cute nigga," you know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, "What you do?" You know what I'm saying? She was working for this nigga named Chocolate Dice. She said, "I get money." You know what I'm saying? So me and my brother, we going up and down the stairs. We seeing all these bitches half naked. We didn't know what the fuck was going on at the time. You know, then we see Don Juan and them pulling up and chocolate dice. All these niggas got Cadillacs and shit. And, uh, you know, uh, she ended up being in a room next to the room. So we were standing in a whole hotel. We didn't even know. So we, she ended up being in a room next to ours. And, you know, she just, you know, stopped. we just started talking. So that was the first hoe that I know was a hoe. Then was this other hoe that was hoeing with her, little light-skinned pretty bitch, right? So I'm... I'm harassing her, and don't you know I was harassing? Why you doing this? Why you doing this, right? So Chocolate Dice, he sent some niggas at me and my brother, and we ended up leaving everything in the motherfucking hotel. <laughs> everything in the hotel. They chased us, man. And we, and, and I don't know if you've been to Chicago, but they got these stairs. You go up the stairs, and it's like a, like like wooden stairs. But once you go up the stairs, you can't go nowhere. So we jumped inside the garbage cans. Me and my brother, we had to hide in the garbage can. They're like, where them niggas go? Where them niggas go? That was, those were Chocolate Dice Hitman. And uh, we hid in that. I never told this story, man. This is the first place. That's crazy. So, uh, you know, so uh, that's, that was the first two hoes that I met. The next, uh, we went to, to Milwaukee. Uh, I, I met my, my man, JD. And so he had three bitches. He ended up giving me one of them hoes. That's the first hole I ever pimped on. So, you know what I'm saying? That was my introduction to the game, man. It was a lot of niggas, like the old man was saying, they was on heroin, they was blowing cocaine, doing little stupid ass shit. I, I consider it stupid because I grew up, you know, under my mama thing, the Christian shit, right? So I, I knew no drugs. I still don't do no drugs to this day. You know what I'm saying? Me, uh, so I, you know, I said, man, you know, give me a bitch, give me a bitch. So, that's when I got to be around the hoes and the pimps and the culture and the lifestyle. And his brother named Star Child, he kind of gave me the game. He said, man, whenever you see a bitch, he said, ask the bitch, where you going? Where you little bitch? What's your mama and what's your uncle now? He said, drill the bitch. He said, make sure you get all the information from the bitch. He said, that's how you gonna tell what type of bitch you got. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, he told me, he said, man, this is how you knock a nigga for the bitch. When you get him, you serve the bitch. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up knocking him for this bitch named Bridget. You know what I'm saying? I was 16, so I became legendary as a young nigga. So that the uh, the old man, uh, 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 Gordon, the dude, uh, 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 slogan he was talking about to kill Stan, that's when them niggas started fucking with me. You know what I mean? I'd be over there with them old niggas, you know what I'm saying? The crib had a perm and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when niggas used to wear perms. And I used to be sitting up at the same beauty shop. Them niggas that get my hair pop, you know what I'm saying? Go get my shoes from Nine Bush. I was a young nigga. But I, but I still had that gangster shit in me, you know what I'm saying? So I couldn't shake the gangster shit. Cause you know, I mean, I'm, I'm in the game, but you know, me and my niggas, we robbing banks and doing crazy shit. So I'm like, you know, that's really what was in me. But you know, I'm gonna try this pimp shit though. I'm gonna see how this shit go, right? You know what I'm saying? Hopefully this shit will get me out, out, out of the shit, my miseries, right? But you know what I'm saying? I'm going back to the penitentiary. And then when I got in the penitentiary, I met Pimp and Pope. So Pimp and Pope, he give me the game. He said, listen, man, he said, you got to desensitize yourself, man. He said, you can't have no feeling from the hoes. I said, well, how you end up here, nigga? If you a pimp, why you in here with me? He said, well, the nigga Sam, dude named Pimp and Sam, jumped on his car. He shot him off the car. It's this girl named Juanita I went to high school with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she had chose up on him. Then she ended up choosing up on, on uh, Sam. And uh, that's why he, he shot Sam. And uh, so while he was in there, he told me, he said, man, you know, there's no difference between an in-pocket bitch and an out-of-pocket bitch. He said, man, listen, man. He said, bitch, you better go from this motherfucker in the best part of that in the best part of her tongue still sticking your dick, your dickhead not losing the drop. He said, bitches love instruction. He said, whatever you do, you get bitch instruction. Hey, clean my shoes, wash my clothes. You know what I'm saying? He just So that's how I really got acclimated with the gang. So when I came home, the first prostitute I met after I got, you know, when I'm ready, really ready was a bitch named... Uh, God damn, man, Nancy. So then I met Curlin, and that's really sparked my career. And from there, you know, I just started, you know, like Michael Jordan, I just started, when I get in the air, I, I tried another move, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and next day, you know, niggas was trying to show me how to pill, but I was the slickest talking nigga on the blade, you know what I mean? So I'm spitting it like a Uzi, you know, I had an Uzi in my mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit was just drilling, right? So motherfuckers just, you know, they just started liking me and shit, and then I, my dumb ass, Went and, and robbed another bank. Damn. And robbed another Jewish store. Went back to penitentiary. Got out. 
you know what I'm saying, me and, you know, uh, I come up with uh, this other bra named Tangie and uh, CC. It was on off to the races. So I was I, I was pimping like ninety five going north. You know what I'm saying? And uh, niggas love me everywhere I go because you know I I always been a cool dude. You know this this image that I have. This ain't no fake image. I always been humble and cool. But I've been a gang. I was a gangster, but I was a humble gangster. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I went to wild nigga. I'm like, if you fuck with me, nigga, I'm gonna sleep under your porch. You know what I'm saying, nigga? I'm gonna stick a bitch on you. I'm gonna get you. That's the kind of gangster I was. I went to kind of, yeah, you know, I ain't have a gang banging and shit. No, I just, just, niggas knew not to fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't play that shit. You know, so uh, then after that, it just was pimping on, you know. And that's how I met Rome, you know what I mean? And I met him, you know what I'm saying? When I seen him with them 17 bitches, and I seen them pimping like a motherfucker, you know, he, like I said, he came to my party. He had 10 bitches with him, you know, and, and my niggas was like, God damn, you know. They was like, what's what's going on? I said, this ain't even the squad, nigga. This just this just the party. Yeah. I said, they got seven more bitches somewhere else, right? <laughs> and you know, I, I, that's crazy as hell, man. Hey, man, but you know what though? The crazy thing about Rome is, uh, when I came to Dallas, I wasn't hearing about him. I was hearing about other pimps. You know what I'm saying, man? This pimp, this, this pimp, that, this pimp, this, this pimp, that. And I would hear about them. I never seen they hoes. There was some giants in the town, but I never seen they bitches. I seen a couple of bitches ride up and down that I might have sweat on the blade on the track. You know what I'm saying, me? But I never seen it whole. But when I stopped fucking with Ron, I seen him actually, you know, like people tell me, man, I ain't never seen Pippa Kim with 16 bitches. I had them, but they ain't never seen them. <laughs> but Rome had 17 bitches, and I really seen them. And I, and you I seen them with him? Yeah, he, he, he that man, I got the movie. And my, right. I got the movie. I got part two. I don't even really show it. it uh, right. uh, that movie I showed you, I'm going to give you part two of it. You're going to see Ron going there with them hoes walking right behind them pretty ass white bitches. Like some pretty motherfucking white hoes. You know what I'm saying? Ron, Ron, okay, Ron. Ron, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go back to this damn party that you threw in Dallas. Right. Did you know that Pippin Kim was for the fight at your party? Man, did you, you, when did you hear about you, that? You, you, know, you know what, man? I. I, I you know, I, I didn't really know exactly what ex, to what extent it was what, was what was going on really, till the till the end of it. You know, I, oh, you did you didn't know it was happening? Well, no, I didn't know really how intense it was. I thought maybe it was just some, a situation where they needed to, to talk some shit out or whatever, but I didn't know that it was going to actually. What happened at the party, man? Because uh, uh, Valentino spoke on it a little bit earlier, but let, let me hear your what, side of what what was going on. Well, you know me, man. I'm like. I'm like the first nigga in Milwaukee, you know what I'm saying, that really, you know, got out there really big on the pimping. You know, we had a couple players like Sonny Page, uh, Sluggo, you know what I'm saying, but they wasn't out there like me, you know what I mean? And, you know, I'm the first nigga that brought, what Rome did, I did just on the pimp side. I brought Bishop, Don Juan, every pimp from all over the country. And that's when you're watching Pimps Up, Hose Down. Pimps Up, Hose Down. That's, oh, those are, those yeah. are all my parties. You know what I'm saying? American Pimp when Snooky win the Pimp of the Year. That's my party. So I was doing that shit, but I was a lot younger. I was like 30, maybe 31. But I was a real, real known, reputable pimp. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so a lot of niggas in the town, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, they wanted to, you know, they wanted to come at the crown. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so you know, a lot of niggas, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, take anything I do, it'll be like, with V12, you know, it'd be some, it'd be some, some additives, some preservatives, and some mix on the shit. You know what I mean? When never just Ken did this, it was always Ken. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what I mean? So the shit would be escalated. You know what I'm saying? So Sam had heard some shit. You know what I'm saying? That I supposedly had said. You know what I'm saying? And it, if if you listen to it the way, you know, it was another big time pimp told him. So you know, it made it sound like it had some validity. You know what I'm saying? But if you listen to how I told you, you know what I'm saying? I said, oh, he did see that? And you know what I'm saying? And dude went and re 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 reported it back. And dude came back. He thought I was trying to shit on him. But you know what I'm saying? Anybody that know me know that's not my character. You know what I'm saying? So uh, dude, you know what I'm saying? He was up there with Valentino. So Valentino said, Ken, he said, where that nigga at? Where he at? Where he at? Uh, I'm finna beat his ass. And he, and he got a gun and shit. And uh, you know, he came down. And when he came down, you know, you know, I said, I said, nigga, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and they got it all on camera. You know, I threw my dukes up. He threw his dukes up. Didn't nothing really transpire, though, because Kenny Red now kind of squashed the shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, uh, you know, it got on this tape called the, the Masters Players Ball. Yeah. So that's why everybody know about it. 
that you know thing out on it's, the tape. Man, everybody see me throwing my dukes up and it was crazy, man. And you know, wow. Rome, you know what I'm saying, heard about it. Because that was your, you put that out, right? Yeah, but you know, I, I, I want to correct something on that. Okay. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like I say, I, you know, when that when that tape was edited, right? It it was edited by a crew that I had brought out here from California. They came and shot the footage and shit like that, right? But the way that that tape was edited, it made it look like as if Bishop had gotten knocked for this little white bitch. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. But, shit. You, know, wow. but, but you know something that wasn't that wasn't even the case. That little bitch was in everybody's hotel room. She was just prancing around, just wanting to be around some pimps, right? Mm -hmm. And but the way that the tape was actually fabricated to make it look like Bishop you know, got, Bishop knocked, got knocked. But no, Bishop wasn't even in the game to be knocked. You know, be, he that that little bra wasn't even with him. Wow. So they made, and that's. So they, they the first clickbaiters. <laughs> the yeah, is. before clickbaiting was oh, clickbaiting. I, 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 didn't, I didn't really support that DVD after it was finalized because of that. You know, I didn't really push it because I felt like, you know. It was false. It was, it was some false fake narrative. Shit going, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it was a false narrative about Bishop supposed to be getting knocked by some broad and shit. That and them niggas even. trying to show me fight. That shit wasn't cool, yeah, man. That, that, you know wasn't what I'm even, that wasn't even the case. But was, you know? was, was Bishop, Bishop was there. He did have girls there. He didn't have no girl there. Well, no, I mean, Bishop was, Bishop, 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 Minister Simo, everybody was there, man. You know, we was all there just to have a good time. That little chick that was there, she was just hanging out, wanting to be around everybody. But what know? made them think that she was Bishop girl? Cause this little young dude, what's that nigga name? Uh, little slim silk, nigga with the punch. Silk, silk, uh, little, little silk, silk, silky. He, silk was supposed to be the silk, knocked, silk, knocked silk, him silky. for the bra, but that that wasn't even the case. He, silky. He, uh, so did Silky put it out there? Yeah. Now nah, what well, they filmed it and they want they was making it look like Bishop got knocked for a bitch that was already a Montana looser than the Montana Goose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So you know what I'm saying? So so you know a lot of shit about that tape, like he said. You know, it was unpimp like, you know what I'm saying? So you could tell it was some squares that did it because yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 ain't nobody gonna you know, ain't nobody gonna show niggas feuding, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or or nigga fake knocking a bitch. So what did when you seen that you knew that you was on the tape? It was funny to me, you know, cause when I seen it, it was funny to me because everybody was talking about it. It was like it was like before in the internet, it was like it was viral uh, it was, before it was, viral. It went viral on, on the streets and people was buying it. And so niggas was like, Yeah man, Ken, I know you had them hands, I know you can box. I said, No nah, man, I said that ain't even what it was, man. I was just like I said, man, when you get COVID or you get a cold, your immune system attack your body. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, when you swing at me, I'm gonna put my hands up because your mind is designed to protect you. Right. I was just protecting myself. I wasn't trying to, you know, go to battle with the man, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean? you know, if he would have just you know what I'm saying? Say, hey, what's up, nigga? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nigga, you're you, you, you on the pimping, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's some sucker shit you did. I'd have been shooting back at him. Like, nah, nigga, ain't nothing sucker about me, nigga. And it would have been like that. But, you know, it was like, you know, it was a protect. It was to protect myself. You know what I'm saying? But them niggas, you know, they tried to make it seem like, you know, uh, I was uh, Mike Tyson. Did you know Sam was even fit to come at you? You didn't even know. You even mad at you? Well, yeah, he was mad, but you know, I mean, them niggas know me. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know I don't give a fuck about that shit, man. Man, I'm telling you, uh, he ain't that nigga, man. I'm telling you, man, ain't that nigga, man. I mean, y'all see me selling these DVDs, but you know, I'm always by myself. Exactly. You know I ain't no bitch, no, right? I got you. You know, what you, know you, you know, these niggas run up on me, you know what I'm saying? I got to do something. You know what I'm saying? I got money in my pocket every day, every man. Every day. Yeah, so I stand on mine, you know so what I'm saying? I get and, it. Uh, Sam know this. He knew that. He knew you that. Know what I'm saying? But, you know, he didn't really want to fight. He was just, you know, trying to make a he point. He got emotional. He, he was cussing and t he had a gun, everything. He was mad, but he wasn't going to do nothing to me, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? He know this shit didn't marry it, that. It wasn't that serious. Sam is my nigga, man. Sam is a cold motherfucker yeah, out of Milwaukee, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I want to yeah. ask you this, though. When they, when, when, who had the damn uh, VHS or who was in there recording with the Cam Carter? Well, no, I had a. Uh, Camera crew, which uh, flew out here from LA. That's a big know. thing back then. That wasn't no uh, little. Punk. How much you pay for that camera crew? Well, I, I had I had a business partner at the time that had bought his bought the camera crew out. Okay, here. cause they wasn't cheap. You know, back then you couldn't get yeah. no camera crew. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we had we had they they was there the whole way. We had them set up at the hotel throughout the whole. That shit was thing. slick. And what was the name of the uh, the the DVDs well, uh, or, or the, uh, the, the the Masters Players Ball? 
The, that's what they call it. So I, is it on? Is it on YouTube and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can, you can definitely. The Masters play playing ball. Ma masters players ball. ball. The Masters players ball. Yeah, I'm gonna look. See, I told you, I see you all the time on all the old stuff. I go back and look for. I hey, said, but you know what? Hey, hey, the hey, you know what? You know what was so crazy about that? I was looking at that shit. I said, man, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? Every time a black man try to do something positive, right. another black man put him two steps back, you know, because I was transitioning, you know, the shit I'm trying to get young people to do. And I was doing a movie call from the Ghetto Streets to Zeki Streets. I yeah, know you yeah, got you that. Always, yeah. So, you know what I mean? You know, I'm trying to, you know, and uh, I tell I tell Rome, all of them, I said, man, I don't even want to do the pimp shit, man. I'm cool. I'm right. cool on that, right? Wow. You know what right. I'm saying? And all of them think, you know, that I don't really love the game, but I love the game because ain't often I speak of love, but when I speak of love is people I'm speaking of. You know what I'm saying? You got to remember, man, I done made millions off the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't shine. You know how a nigga grow up, you know, you see people you want to be. I became the niggas that I wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I had the hundred, I told you how I got the hundred thousand dollar bus down. You know what I'm saying? I had that, you know, I modeled for Murray. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I modeled all the Murray shoes. I modeled for them people. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have a Pippin King shoe like a Michael Jordan shoe. So I love the game. The game been good to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Man. They, I, mean, I mean, Simon Schuster gave me a quarter million dollars for a book. You know what I'm saying? They gave me a quarter million dollars for a book. I didn't have no self-publishing. I didn't know motherfucker. I didn't write that shit. They came to me and I wrote it after they paid me. After they gave me my first uh, 125 Damn. man. So what I'm saying, the game ain't bad to me. You know what I'm saying I don't, I don't have no problems with the game. So you telling me in 1994 you was saying I'm gonna get out? Cause no, that was a long no, time. No, 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 oh, no. When did you do this? In 2004, 2005. You were saying I'm, I, I, I'm trying okay. to get out of it. Okay, this is the same shit I should tell wrong. I said wrong man. You know you got all this money, you got all these holes. You got to do something with your money. Right. I said man, uh, do a ball. I said do a movie. He remember, if he now, as we talk, he remember, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to talk, I said, man, do the movie, you're going to make a lot of money, like I made money. Rome sit me down and right. talked to me for hours. He was picking my brain. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I explained to him, you know, how I, how I perceived the things. But what got me out the game was Pimps Up, Hoes Down. Wow. See, right. when they came to me, they said, you know, here's X amount of money, they tried to give me a thousand. I ended up going with 80 times that, plus, you know, the movie ending with me plus credits on the movie because I didn't know nothing about the movie, but I understood life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, life let me know that these motherfuckers come and they talking about they HBO. If y'all really HBO, give me this money. If you really HBO, I need credits. If you really HBO, give me permission to shoot my own movie. That's that movie Pimpology. Yeah. That's the same footage of Pimp Stuff Holds Down. If you look at it, most of that's the same footage. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So, they agreed to let me do it. So, at this point, when I seen myself on TV, I'm pretty sure Rome, you know, he had a epiphany too. When I seen myself on TV, I said, damn. And my father was sitting there, he said, boy, you a dumb motherfucker. You know, I said, what you mean, Pop? He said, now every motherfucker know you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, Pop's right. And then at that point, you know what I'm saying? I just started, you know, editing my movie, you know what I'm saying? And then I put my movie out, and that's when I decided that I want to get out of the game. So actually what happened, when the broad that I had, I sent it to North Dakota to a dance spot, but it's really a little host spot. You know, and, and what they do, they dance, and then the tricks meet them at the hotel after they dance, you know? So she had about 7,000. I told her to send the money, and she was delaying on the sending the money. And she had my Cadillac, so I was like, man, you know, what's wrong with this bra? You know what I mean? She, I've been fucking with this bra for eight years. She ain't never did this. And so she didn't do nothing, and then so I called her daddy. I said, look here, man. I said, man, if she don't give me my motherfucking car, man, I'm gonna get it like Mike Tyson got his. We gonna fight for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need my motherfucking car. I said, she can have that trap. And she can give it to any little nigga she want to give it to. They gave me the car. I sold the car, and I bought five thousand dollars worth of DVDs. Damn. I sold them. I sold five thousand dollars of DVDs in thirty days. I made a hundred bands, and I ain't stopped selling DVDs since. Damn. That's why people when they be like Ken, you know, nigga, I ain't, uh -uh, nigga, I ain't put uh -uh. nigga. Y'all giving it up. Y'all call me a David, a DVD, a man, whatever you want to call me, nigga. I said, nigga, right. anytime I could do something for a small amount of money, it made nineteen hundred percent profit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and be famous and can use my fame to get paid. Say, a lot of niggas use their fame to be seen and be in the VIP and be special. I use my fame to sell DVDs. No, you get paid. You know what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money. So that's what made me say, fuck the game. You know what I'm saying? It's but hard. I'm going to be honest with you. The bitches never let me say, fuck the game. Because, you know what I mean? You know, you got to still, you know, if you got a top 10 list of pimping, right? 
You know, my name is somewhere on that list. Hey. So, so, so the bitches is still looking for that top 10 nigga. You know what I'm saying? Me. So a lot of bitches, you know, bad white hoes, you know what I'm saying? Me, you know, chose up. You know what I'm saying? Me, I, you know, I had, man, I had so many bitches trying to fuck with me. I need a baseball bet to get them home. I said, no, bitch, you don't qualify. Bam. You know what I'm saying? I had to get them up off me because they would just sweat me that hard. And a lot of black bitches always love me, so they always try to fuck with me. So even though I was out the game, they still want to come, want come to me. Out of it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I understand why Rome say he got out the game. Rome, let right. me ask you this, Rome. Favorite car, man, because you done had a bunch of them, man. I got to ask man, you that. You, you know, know, we love our toys, man. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm your favorite car ever. I asked you this before. I, well, I asked well, Ken how many cars, but back in the days, you know, y'all went through them right. cars like crazy. Well, I, 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 I guess I would say my favorite car was that 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 Bentley. The Bentley. Yeah, it was the most most comfortable. Yeah. So you was driving Bentley before nigga we even getting in Bentley. Oh uh, yeah yeah. You first. Right. You pulled up. <laughs> yeah. What about I hey, mean, that nigga used to pull yeah, up but, real slow, man. <laughs> he was the coolest motherfucker he ever, man. Slow. It's like it's like I be like, man, is that the speed limit? This nigga pull up, man, doing about right. four miles an hour. Damn. Hey, 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 then he, he look up, he fixes his tire. Right. You know, he jack his slacks. I said, right. this nigga cool as a motherfucker. So so no, and let me ask you, did you get flagged from that? Or they just accepted the white boys, the, the bullies, everybody back then, they accepted it. You made well, them accept it? I mean, when I first got it, when I first got it, I remember pulling out the house. Pulling out the house, man, and uh, get up to, the, get up to the, the stop, get ready to make the turn, and I see a cop go past, and it seemed like his face was actually in his window looking at me. Damn. So I went ahead and make the left, and I'm 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 suited up. I'm getting ready to go out, and uh, I get, I make the left, and and by that time he didn't hit his brake lights and jumped in the left lane. Now he's going to make a turn, a U turn, trying to get to you, so he can double back and jump behind me. And uh, his excuse for pulling me over was the fact that I didn't have a front license plate, and. With, with those type of Bentleys, they didn't even come where you could put a license plate on the front of it. Hey, this nigga saying? had to take That's it. illegal. Legal. Yeah. For him to, if there ain't no holes in there, yeah. I learned that from my partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, They can't make you he, put no well, license plate on that there. That was he, just his, his excuse. Yeah. You know? This nigga had the kind of bitches, right? <laughs> you don't even think you're going to see him in the strip club, on the nah, blade. Nah, I mean, nah, he had some expensive ass bitches. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, yeah, you, I'm yeah. like, man, you like, what these? I know these hoes. I don't see these hoes on the blade. I don't see these hoes in the strip club. Where these hoes be? You know money what I'm saying? Money money. And see, yeah, and, see, and see, with me, I, I always kept a program where I, I didn't, you know, I don't smoke weed or nothing like that. And I didn't never allow my girls to smoke. Girl to smoke, do no drugs, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? So how did, I, how did, I, where was the place? Where, how did they, how did they even know? If they wasn't on the blade on the track, well. Well, you know, like I say, I mean, I, I started out on the track, and then I got away from it once I got turned on to how to how to get that that money off out these yellow pages and and, and off these phones and whatnot. And uh, they used to call straight up out the yellow pages for me. Straight up out the yellow yeah. pages. Yeah. Boy, that's hell right there. That's a that's before before internet. This is yeah. straight up out the yellow pages. It wasn't hard either. Yeah, and, and as far as uh, as far as my my phones. All my phones used to run in a circle. All my girls' phones used to run in a circle. Your phone ring and you don't catch it, it's going to bounce to the next phone. So on and so on. It go in a big circle so everybody got action and getting money. Wow. Man, that boy read them books locked up. Yeah, he read <laughs> and took it to a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, that's hey, him, that's why I wanted Carla. Him and Carla, they was the top of the and line. See, and, see, and see, then you, you avoid all the, all the fuckery that come with it with girls being out of pocket and you know, niggas hitting their line and shit like that because you didn't have to worry about that because the next bitch gonna tell them the bitch, the bitch out of pocket because if she missed the call, it's gonna roll over to her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow, man. So, uh, man, that, that's that, that, man, that's wild. You got man. all the good shit, man. Nah, you, you I stole, got y'all over here, man. You already, you already man, kicking it. You, you, you kicked it with already, man. You was over there kicking it hard, yeah. You but got all the good shit out of Ron. Ron was he was laid back. Now he, <laughs> now he popping that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all boys, man, like I said, is it? I mean, you know, I heard the story about Fillmore where he took five girls on the block and or, was it five? His first string. His first string. He said that, that was the second string. He said it wasn't even but, first right, string. But, but that, that was a true story. Yeah, yeah, you know, Fillmore, that's my guy. We're going to be interviewing Shout him. Shout out to Fillmore, man. But you know, I just want to say this, man, you know, the shit Ron was doing, was on a whole nother level. It was different than everybody. I mean, I know, like I said, I got one partner, man, that played golf and, you know, got mansions and shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I got two partners, I got another partner down in Miami, man, he got like 40 bitches, you know what I'm saying? He's the only person I know that got more bitches, and they all work in the strip club, you know what I'm saying? He owned the club, he owned the strip club, and they some some gorgeous bitches, you know? Everybody, wow. everybody know who he is, I ain't gotta say his name, but you know what I'm saying? The way they doing, the way they did it, you know, you know, it's just a different level of operation. You know what I mean? if I When I look at Ron, if he wanted to run a Fortune 500 company, I think he could have, you know what I'm saying? Because the way he ran his operation, the, the, the way he carried himself, you know, it was far more distinguished than the average person. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. And I acknowledge that and I noticed that, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I know, you know, the other guys, you know, a lot of guys, they want to be on the track. You know, they want their hoes, you know, riding up and down the cars, waving tricks down and doing all that shit. That's cool. That's old Harry Hines. That's cool. But, you know, when I mean, you got a motherfucker spending $100,000 on a player's ball, like That's Rome deep. did, and get everybody suites, not hotels, but suites, and everybody living good, everybody, you know, Eating good, everybody drinking good. You know that's another level of the game. It's a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Me, so I know a lot of a lot of guys, but you know, I don't think too many niggas. You know what I'm saying? Did it like Rome did it. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and niggas say I'm the greatest, but you know what I'm saying? Me, I take my head out to my man because my man, you know, he did it on such a level, and it was so smooth. You know, it wasn't ghetto, it wasn't country. You know, it wasn't. You know, like everybody loved the clown. You know what I'm saying, pimp? But don't nobody want to take the clown home. Rome is the type of dude that his girls probably say, hey, I'm thinking about marrying him one day. Because you know what I'm saying? He was that clean cut, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me and that conservative with the pimping, you know what I mean? And I never saw that until I seen him. And like he said, I didn't even know the phones ran in circles. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Me, all that shit, that was high tech game. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, so you can have yeah, game. Yeah. Well, see, that, that eliminate a lot of a lot of out of pocketness and shit, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, like I said, you're going to have some bras that's going to be more loyal to you than others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But making them motherfucking phones and that phone call circulate, you're going to be the tail of the tape. You're going to find out what's happening. Wow. And everybody ain't going to do it on that level. You know what I'm saying, Ron? Yeah, exactly. No, not everybody, man. Like exactly. I said. I ain't do it on that level. You didn't know? do it on that I, level? Yeah. I, well, I, my system was, you know, the gratuities. Remember I told you about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. my bras was running tricks up, you know, through gratuities at the strip club. Yeah, 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 So yeah. I'd get 10, 15,000. I was getting money. You just did it a different way. But I didn't have 17 bitches. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You still I'm getting the I'm money I'm though. talking about when I had 16 bitches, I was ghetto pimping. I was on the blade. I was on the track. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I wanted niggas to see the bitches. I wanted, you know, everybody to have, you know, pimping Ken. Ken Ivy on the tattoos on the arms, you know. Hey, I fuck with Ken Ivy. I wanted to be known for pimping back then. But when I got into the, the, the game and I started, you know, one of my brothers had a master's degree. When I got into that type of pimping, you know what I'm saying, me, which I consider that's something similar to what Rome was doing. When I got on that level, you know what I'm saying, me, it was too late. You know what I'm saying, me, when I was young, I might have would have put 30 bitches in a strip club. You know what I'm saying, but, you know, I don't know if anybody ever told you, Rome might agree with me on this. Women, you know, can be debilitating. You know what I'm saying, me, I mean, just the nagging and the confusion and the arguing, right. <laughs> the arguing and all that stuff. You know what I'm right. saying? Hey, man, that shit will drain you, right? So yeah. think about it like this, E. When you multiply that in multiples by five and by 10 and by 15, right. you know what I'm saying? I mean, you become, it's like a boxer. You get hit so much, you just become, you know, you, you don't want to be in the ring no more because you're tired of getting hit, even though you're winning. Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't give a fuck how many fights he win. He get tired of, you know, them close calls, you know, because yeah. Pacquiao hit his ass pretty hard. The other dude hit his ass pretty they hard. He had about four or five they of them. That, that, uh, what's that dude named? The, uh, the, the, the black Jab Judah hit Jab his ass Judah. pretty hard. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, well, well, take that and put that in the context of the game. You know what I mean? One woman, you know what I'm saying? She might be, everybody might be in pocket, but you got one woman that's just 
full of noise, always complaining, always the negative energy. You understand me? And you talking to her 24 hours because she's really trying to get your attention. So she's going to act up and she know that's going to take you away from your business. And your other hoes going to be, you know, cool because they already, you know, they know what they're here to do. Yeah. But this one bitch and you get two of them and three of them and you do that over a succession of time and years, you become desensitized. You're like, man, fuck this shit. You know what I'm saying? It ain't be like that you just can't pimp no more. It's just can you, as an older man, keep going through that stressful moments? You know what I'm saying? And, and that's really what happened to me. So by the time I got to where I really had some good game, you know, like Rome, you know, had with his little system, you know what I'm saying? You know, his system was a little bit better than mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with bitches, you know, that got, you know, you know, what do you think, on their mind. What do you think about dudes that is like on their strongest pimp game in this stage of life? At at the, at forty eight to sixty, what do you think about dudes like that? Well, I ask you first, Ron, but I want to hear from you too. Well, I mean, I, I tell any man you can't never wake no career out of pimping, man. You know, I mean, you know, you, when you when you go to thinking about just the longevity of, you know, just you know being able to reinvent yourself and. You know, like I say, you know, what I've learned at my age now is, you know, being in that game, I've missed out on a lot. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing things and opportunities out there now, big money, money making opportunities. Yeah. That I never even thought about when I was locked in that game, man. Because your mind was straight focused on the game. Exactly. What exactly. about you? What's the question here? The question is like like for a man that would be doing at at the level y'all talking about when y'all were young men, for that guy to see that level now at forty eight, say to to sixty and be able to how would he deal with something like that now? You know, the younger women mm -hmm. on the track, trying to keep up with all that stuff uh, y'all did as a young man. You know, you know, a guy, right, that that's married, right? You know, he got a wife, you know what I'm saying? He say Man, I'm tired of this nagging ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all she does is run her fucking mouth. And you know what I'm saying? I'm done with this relationship. Then you meet a, a pretty young lady, right? And you know what I mean? Y'all get a little conversation going. Then she become a nagging ass bitch. Man, fuck that. I might as well just stay with my wife. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I think what happens is after t after a period of time, you know, like I said, you know, I give you some good game. And this is a free game. You know what I'm saying? I, sp I talk about this on Beehive. You know, men have two levels, right? You got your reasoning faculties, which is here, and then you got your emotional faculties, which is here. 95% of the shit we do is on impulse. You know, you walking on impulse. You know what I'm saying? You don't count your steps. You eating on impulse. You don't count your, 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 your measure. You know, everything you do, the way you move, look, that's impulse. So that's 95% of the shit that we do. But it's a reasoning faculty, too. That's your conscious level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so when you look at an ox, right? An ox is one of the strongest, you know, how they say strongest ox. But if you took a gun and you put it up to an ox head, like you're going to hunt him, and you're a hunter, that ox don't have enough reasoning faculty to understand that he's about to be hunt. So he's going to become some ox tails. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you look at a lion, who's the most ferocious lion the uh, uh, animal in the kingdom, you know, he's notorious. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody is scared of the lion. Now, everybody know that the lion can be detrimental to their existence, right? You know, that's why the gazelle every morning he get up to run faster than the lion. He don't get up to live. He get up to run faster than the lion or the tiger, because the lion is ferocious. But the lion is impulsive. If you put a steak or a cow, half a cow, in a cage. That lion, every time, will go in that cage and devour that half a cow because of the smell of blood and his impulse. He don't know they're going to pull the cage down. He's going to become a zoo animal. That's you know what I'm saying? But we have the ability to reason and say, oh, oh, man, he finna shoot me. You know, let me duck. Oh, man, I ain't going in that cage. That's a trap. You know, they ain't finna trap me in that cage. But these two animals, the strongest animal, one of the strongest animals, the ox or the lion, mm -hmm. don't have the capacity to think. So it was a guy by the name of John Legend. I mean, yeah. not John, John Blunt. So John Blunt was a great English financier. You know what I'm saying? What he did was he created this company called the C Company. And what this company did, it had all the kings, all the people in England invested. It was so profitable that this lady, she was once a maid. And she was working for this lady. And she was at uh, 
like a symphony, a symphony you know, or, or a play, a Shakespeare play. And she was sitting in the VIP balcony, and the lady she used to work with sitting on the floor. She looked and said, how the hell did you get up there? She said, I invested with John Blunt. So it's a guy by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. You know who that is? Mm -hmm. So he's come up with the theory of relativity, gravity, and all that stuff. He invested in John Blunt's company. Wow. Right? So he invested 7,000 pounds. He got a multiple of three. He got 21,000 pounds back. He said, what goes up must come down. That's his theory, right? Yeah, yeah. What goes up must come down. But he went back into uh, the investment, and he lost everything. became became uh, impoverished at 70. He said, I would never allow my emotions to supersede my intelligence. Wow. His emotion was based on greed. Right. So you understand me? A lot of times, you know, we have to make intelligent decisions. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with people. We're dealing with women. We have a collective. You know, we have a collective of experience. We have things that we've been through that tell us that, you know, if I do this, 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 that, and the other, I'm going to get this result. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we learn from our experience, you know, and that's what happens. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times when you use your reasoning faculty, mm -hmm. you'll realize that, you know, hey, man, you know, you got intelligent IQ, IQ, intelligent quotient, and then you got EQ, emotional quotient. So you got to be emotionally sharp as well. as So emotionally sharp would be if Ron came up to me and said, bitch ass, stick woo woo woo. Emotionally, I have to say, don't be impulsive. This thing is tripping. Wrong tripping. I'm not for to fight him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not for to argue with him because I can't win the argument. Because from a distance, don't nobody know who's the fool, him or I. They just know we argue. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? You, you know, that's the intelligence you develop in the game. And that's why you don't see me pivot. Not because I can't do it. It's because I have a collective. I have a, a, a series of experience that allows me and precludes me from going back into that lifestyle. Wow, wow. Right. Um, you... Say there's a lot of opportunity out here. Yeah. A lot of stuff that you couldn't see when you was in the game. Well, um, I, I, I just want to get into some of the things that you've been venturing into after, you know, getting out of the game. Like, um, whether it be, whatever the business may be, the entrepreneurship is in you guys. Right. It's really entrepreneurship. Just right. like me being a hustler <clears throat> in the streets. It's really, it's something inside of you that you know how to deal with people well. Right. It's just entrepreneurship and you spin it a different way. What right. did you spin it to? Well, I mean, the thing is, is just, you know, being away from it, man, and just having, you know, just just a, just a, a moment of solitude, just to really just reflect, man, and, and concentrate on, 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 on myself. Um, you know, what used to be important to me back then is, is non-void now. You know, it's not important to me anymore. What's important to me now, man, is, is just being wealthy and, and healthy. And uh, you know, financially stable, you know, and and in, in regards to real world wealth, you know, uh, you know, hustling all your life, you know, you don't have a four one one k four four hundred one k or a retirement plan or anything of that nature. So, at once you reach a certain age, you start thinking like think, thinking in terms of okay, well, I got to hurry up and get some stack, get some up under the kitty, you know, and. Uh, so my thing is I've always been into, uh, you know, building businesses and things of that nature. So <clears throat> my thing now is back when I was in the game and, and, you know, owning the nightclub and the restaurants and all that stuff, you know, I wasn't, I had the money and I, I, I really didn't take it as serious as I do now with the knowledge that I got. Now you know what I'm saying because now I'm I'm thinking in terms of more solidarity and and, and establishing business yeah, sustainability yeah, yeah so exactly so, so you would it come to uh, <clears throat> trucks and all type well of I mean I got a trucking company yeah I got, trucking I got a trucking company I got a you know got a trucking company that uh that's been in existence since 2009 so that's been doing pretty good. Um, I'm also just now starting to get off into, I'm looking to start buying uh, duplexes. Okay. Uh, buying houses and, and doing- Real you know, estate. Yeah, getting into the real estate and also getting into the commercial. I'm actually looking for a building right now on the commercial side. Wow, that's, that's good stuff. I was yeah. doing that too. Um, it, we kind of in a buyer's, is we in a buyer's market right now? It's changing right now. Yeah. It's yeah. changing. 
And I think one of my mentors told me the thing to do is just to always keep up on what the price is when exactly. it's good, so you know when it go bad what exactly. the price is. Yeah, you buy when you buy exactly. when the market go bad. You correct, know? correct. Right. You know, because a lot of foreclosures closes closes. are available. Right. Correct. That's the. That's I tell the you, game. a good a good investment that I'm investing in is uh, trailer parks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, you get them for about ten thousand, and the, and the, uh, the Europeans, you know, the, the 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 white people, the poor white people, pay a thousand dollars a month. Wow! So yeah. you can pay for them in ten months, and then you profitable after ten months. And that ain't bad. Yeah, and that I got bad. I got five of them in Kane, Texas, right here. That's why I come to Texas a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that boy pimping kids, and I ain't, I'm here for a reason. Ron, I, I just was trying to get you out, get that business side out of you before we got off here because the people really, right. you know, at the end of the day, we well, know already that your I'm entrepreneurship spirit, Pimp and Ken, Ken, Ken Ivy, as, as my boy called you, Ice T, boy, that's Ken right. Ivy, he, he run it in the ground, man. Kenny Ivy, Kenny Ivy. Kenny Ivy, man, he be on it. Just, he, 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 but that's hard. That, but right. the, the, the people that you've introduced me to, man, it's just been phenomenal. You know what I mean? And And it's crazy. How much you always trying to help and give and connect the dots, man. I mm -hmm. got to say that on here. Pimp McKinn is something different, man. Right. And, and, and like I said, when I, he brought you on, I got jealous, man. Right. Like, man this nigga didn't want to talk. This nigga, the, this the nigga right here. Yeah. But, see, but see, you know, right. your, your show is so uh, phenomenal, right? And, right. you know, you you know, you know cross so many barriers. You know, uh, what I wanted to do, you know, and, uh, you know, that's probably why I was able to get the right information out of them. I want to bring, you know, encouragement from a different perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I know this man, you know, everybody that was in this room, I know him personally, right? Yeah, yeah. So I know they got stories, you know, that, that, right. that's got triumph on the, on, on the end of end it, you of know it. what I'm saying? So a lot of times, you know, you know, I try to, you know, bring that side to the game. I did it with my DVDs. Now I want to do it on the podcast, you know, and then, you know, uh, at the same time, you know, I want them to, you know, be able to express that with you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? If he yeah. can come here and Martina can say something to you and it can oh, man. it can come to, you know, to to, to to hunt us later on the positive side, then you know that's 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 proof positive, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's how I move, man. I don't never think, man, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna hog all this to myself, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm a hog in the game. Because you know, as you move in life, you know what I mean you realize that, you know, what's for you is for you. You know, there's no coincidence, there's no accidents, you know what I'm saying? Everything is, is pretty much predestined. You know, that's how I move, man. I don't, you know, I don't trip on that little small shit, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, you definitely been a, a, a blessing to me, for sure. Ever since I started this podcast, I'd have had him on here. I always mess with him. I get him right, on here. Right. I know, he, you know, when he do come, if somebody here, I'll bring him on or I'll bring, I'll bring them in. Right. I was trying to make sure I get them stories because I know he got them stories. Right. And, and, and man, I just want to say, man, you know, the whole game with you, man, being able to transition the way you are doing now right, right. And, and, and bring this thing to a whole head. If people, in the end of the day, when everything's said and done, what do you want your children and your family to remember you by? I want them to remember me by being a hardworking, successful man. You know, I mean, I'm a man before, I've, been, I've always been a man before I was anything. Wow. And that's just how I've always carried myself. Wow. Um, you know, like I say, with, with my boys, man, you know, that just instilling that integrity in them, you know, and, and just being a stand-up man, you know. And, wow. and, you know, like I say, you know, um, you know. Ain't nothing like it, is it? Wisdom, yeah, I mean, wisdom is something else, man. Wisdom pops at the end I, I, like crazy. I mean, man, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy because, it, I mean, you asked me that question and there's so much I want to say and it's all bombarded me at once. And I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because you, but, uh, it's something about your legacy, you know. Yeah. And as Ice T was talking about the legend, everybody gonna remember Rome through that big party. And, right. But 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 really, you know, at right. Rome, you know, it's another side to Rome. You know, yeah. it's yeah. that it's that side where he wanna impact this his family. Right. He talks about generational wealth. Right. We talking about health and all that stuff is serious, man. Right. And that, those are the things you want to be able to your children and your but family you, to remember you know, about you. You, you know. You know. Let me let me tell you something, man. You know, I don't know if you know it, but I'm a single father. Wow. Yeah, I take, I got four children. You got four kids. That I take care of solely by myself. No child support from no bitch, no nothing. Wow. You understand? That's heavy. And I'm raising them by myself. 
You understand? That's big. And uh, I'm getting blessed every day, man. Wow. You know? Man, I think that's, that's, that's stand up. Yeah, yeah. You don't see it much, but when I do, I value it. Yeah. You, you know that value you, I value it because you a yeah. black man. Yeah. And most people think a brother don't take care of his kids. That's what I'm saying. Shit. That's but but saying. but a man. lot of times they ain't looking the right way because I'm here right. standing strong. You see my daughter on there the other day. Hey, I'm right. still trying to get an ROI. A, re, a return on <laughs> a return my return investment. investment. Man, I spent so many millions. I sent <laughs> so many kids to college. I so many birthdays and Christmas. Man, that shit is expensive. Wow, right. and, and, and you're right, man. It's very expensive, man. I just was looking at that check they gave my uh, my my daughter the other day that that uh, UT gave her. Uh, uh, that ain't even the crops of. We still got some more to go. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it, even though they gave her fifty grand, I'm right, right. at right. What did another fifty, 50 grand for? for for her academics of, for Damn. UT? Damn. Then I, I still got to put fit down on top of that. Really, when it, when you talk about you know the right. room and board and staying on the, on, on, oh, on campus, yeah, exactly. hey, I sent I sent my little son, little Kenny. You know, I told you my son that that's in that movie All American. Yeah, he's number fourteen. He's the quarterback in there. I sent him to college. You know, uh, man, we spent so much money. <laughs> That shit never stopped. Then it he never always, stopped. He always had some game. Dad, my car broke down. Dad, this. Dad, <laughs> right. that. And I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You know what I'm saying? Right. But, uh, man, you know, hey, but it pays off. To send it pays college, off, man. You know? Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, yeah, most man, definitely. Hey, man, man, we love you, Ron, man. Hey, it's all good, man. Ken, it's man, you my guy, man. man. Stop playing. You already know, man. Hey, man, we've been uh, say, two, man. two states. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Exactly.